Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back. Today, we're going to be continuing this non-metallic metal tutorial uh, series. We are going to be working on this guy right here. This is Big Primark Rebute Gilliman. So, if uh, as you can see, he obviously has tons and tons of this, uh, you know, gold uh metal all over all over the trims on his chest here he's got the eagle the hand uh, we're going to be working on all of that in this video um i have actually already started working on this nomatox on certain areas but we are going to be going over other areas after i just explain to you what i've done here with these uh areas so Let's just start right into it. I'm assuming you've already seen uh, my video on how to highlight volumes, or you know how to, and you've already seen my uh, previous video on how to paint non-metallic metal. But this, excuse me, today we're going to just be going over a little bit more complex topics with more trim and more uh, odd shapes, a little more awkward shapes, how you can make that look good. This will be perfect for, obviously, would be taking them in this can be used as a guide or if you paint a lot of chaos space marines this is perfect for them because the as counterintuitive as may sound uh chaos space marines rebute Gilliman, Gilliman, they have very very similar armor with that gold kind of trim with chaos space marines being known for that trim um also known as the chaos trim zone as many of you might be uh dreading but don't worry i will be bringing you through all of that today so let's just get started into it Let's bring that opacity. Let's bring the opacity on this layer down to 70%, and then we'll just jump right into it. So, firstly, what did we do over here? Well, we we're looking here. We're thinking again, light source. We're come. We're just gonna pretend that the camera, the way we are viewing, is light source, just coming straight from the direction he's looking. So coming from the front down. Excuse me, coming from the front down onto the model. And we're going to say, well, first primary highlight. We've got to go here. That's, you know, that's just very basic. And again, remember our rule of grouping these geometries together. We're going to group this as one geometry and we're going to highlight those accordingly. Then over here, we're going to have the same thing. Corners catch light. We can disguise this as a secondary highlight. Now on trim, this is a very important rule of trim. Again, believability over realism. On your trim, you're gonna basically just want a lot of just light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, alternating just along the trim. So if we go along this trim, we can see start dark, we're getting lighter, darker, lighter at this corner, darker, lighter, darker, lighter, lighter. So if you notice that, I will walk you through how we got to those conclusions. So if we can see here, this is obviously our main highlight, as I said. Then we're going to go to this darker area that separates this from the secondary highlight that we're uh, disguising in this corner to make it look nice. Then we're going to move over to this corner. This is a very back corner, and we can almost say this is a secondary of the secondary. So we're going to make this really, you know, subtle. This is just XV88. Same thing with this one because this is a very downwards facing surface. If you can see his, you know, chest uh, muscle armor, this is. The under face is the top face. You know, all of this being facing downwards. So that's going to go there. Then again, this is counts as a corner. The tip is going to attract the most light, so we're going to highlight there. Same with this. And just right here, this is another downwards facing edge, so we're just going to highlight it accordingly. So uh, the two things you want to keep in mind when you're doing trim, you want to keep in mind the volumes that you're doing and the alternating patterns of light, dark, light, dark. Same thing with this. Big highlight in the middle, light, light, dark, dark. And we're going for, remember, believability over realism. That is the number one thing I preach that you should take away from these videos if you learn nothing else, is that believability over realism every single time, always, always, always. And um, the thing with this guy here is that we have, normally, we would just want to see, according to volumes, the highlight up here. But uh, with non-metallic metal, we're just going to, Originally, it was highlighted right here, and then I was like, mm, well, we want this attracting light. We want the middle attracting light, but we don't want it to be one big highlight, so I just split the bob. That is just 
for just to make it look nice. Uh, there's no real uh, reason why. Same idea with this thing. We had light up here. Uh, you know, these corners are attracting light. We got this down here. Corners, corners are all attracting light. Corner, corner, corner. And alternating between light, dark, light, dark. This is almost just another cylinder, as we learned last episode. This is a cylinder. So primary highlight, secondary highlight in the back, and try to like the whole thing up. Then over here, this is a more complex shape. As you can see, this is the similar to the curve that we learned on the you know elbow trim of the Stormcast last time. Oh, we learned about how to do these curved surfaces, but this is a little more um a little more complicated than that, because not only is it just a simple cylindrical curve. It has these kind of corners that give it just that little more volume uh, that we can, you know, leverage that. That not only does it make it look more interesting, but it's just it it just looks cooler to just have these cooler volumes and for them to be highlighted appropriately. Because when you highlight things oddly, they tend to just just they just look weird, especially on you know really uh, unconventional shapes and when you highlight them really well, they look just so, so, so much more stunning than any true metallic metal can ever get you. And also, when you get really good, you can use these corners to your advantage to, you know, bring those highlights up in certain places and make that look really believable. I actually have an edge highlight of that, so we're going to go over that together. Again, we're going light, dark, light, dark. We're using the corners to disguise that or kind of use that to be our secondary highlight and using that you know rule of corners attracting light so all these corners are getting light this is just a big thing again corners 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 um but this is another thing that you can help to disguise your non-metallic metal uh you know just highlights where you want to place them is rivets rivets are very very commonplace on your citadel models and especially if they're big prominent rivets like these ones you can use them to disguise your kind of um, shadows that you want to put. Because as we can see, even on the Citadel model, with just the true metallic things, we have light, dark, light, dark. And even here, we have a super, super dark around the bolts because it's just so sunken and we can use that kind of to our advantage to get that kind of, you know, sunken in look. And all around here, we didn't highlight this just as we see it, of course. We see these really light bars. That we made really dark and we see really dark parts that we made really light and these kind of consistent colors not what we really want going on on our model with our non-metallic so if we're let's actually get started into drawing on this model and i will walk you through it so let's go to our smallest brush that we have and let's grab our ice yellow color and we'll go into edge highlighting so again all upwards facing surfaces are going to get an edge highlight this should be almost every edge that you can see on the model from your front angle should get an edge highlight. So if I can see it right now, it should almost always be getting an edge highlight. Very, very, very few exceptions are going to come up. And those exceptions are, you know, really, really sunken in kind of uh, areas around uh, really weird panel lines and corners and rivets. but. These are these rivets are so front and center. I think they deserve a little bit of love in that edge highlighting. Uh, just make them look really interesting, and it just helps define the trim. Because one of the things that trim people who do trim uh, trip up on is they just really forget to define that trim from the rest of the model, and it just really makes them look not bland, but almost just kind of everything blends together. It's hard to see any real separation, which is really, really bad for your readability. And if you guys have watched the last episode, you, you know that I'm a big, big sucker for that readability and that believability. So that's, uh, you know, not good for your non-metallic metal is to have everything blend together. You want that high contrast, high readability, high believability. So with the edge highlights you're going to be able to separate that trim from the rest of the armor plating and it's just going to make 
the trim just look much, much more interesting. And so after we've done that with the ice yellow, we're going to go straight into our ivory. And uh, once we grab that ivory, again, everywhere where we're seeing white, or sorry, everywhere where we're seeing yellow, we're going to want to add that ivory. We're almost just going to add ivory. We're not going to add ivory wherever we see our brown hull red color. That's the only places where we're not going to add ivory. My program is really lagging out, unfortunately. Uh, so everywhere where we see that yellow color, we're going to be adding those ivory highlights, just like that. To this corner too, uh, underneath here. Just everywhere we see those yellows. I'm a broken record right now, but everywhere we see those yellows is going to be getting that ivory edge highlight. It's going to make it look much, much more believable once we have those edge highlights. So if you can see, compared to, I haven't even done the whole thing, but compared to before, um, this already looks more interesting with those uh, edge highlights. It makes it more readable, more defined, really, really interesting. And um, so we're going to call this gauntlet done for now. And let's uh, let's pick this shoulder to go to. So let's see. Where's our main highlight going to be? Uh, I would say our main highlight's going to be right here on this part. That is this, you know, the biggest area that is right in the way of the sun. And again, remember about grouping volumes together. It kind of blends in with this this big highlight right here on the hand, and that's just good for the readability again. So, if we come back, we can really really simplify this arm into just one big cylinder, and we can already see that these two highlights line up. So let's just continue that line, and let's use that as our first rule of where we're going to place the highlight. So. Another thing we're going to be working on in this episode is the hierarchy of what highlights are the most priority. So that's the first thing, is keeping your highlights in line. <sighs> so you're going to be keeping your highlights in line as your priority. So we're going to be going from here to here. Now we know we want to hit this and hit this. That's going to be our first, first priority. So let's go right in there with our XV. We're going to go here, and we're going to say, okay. I want to highlight right here. So let me grab a bigger brush really quickly. And then we're going to just start filling in wherever we see this trim. You're going to be doing the exact same thing on your actual model. If you have it, you can hold it in front of you and start doing this. I would recommend using the wet blending technique. I'll leave a great tutorial for how to wet blend in the. Uh, um box down below so once we add that main highlight we're going to come up here again continuing 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 that line right up to here so we're going to say okay this is a curved surface so let's you know give it a little curve just like that now i think it's a little small let's bring it out a little it'll be able to include this thing which is good because these are basically corners personified so they catch a lot of light so let's bring it up and now we have a dilemma what is this this is a rivet so again remember when i said the rivets are going to you know distract a lot of light in this case we're gonna ignore it because it's so in the way of our main highlight i think it would just look best let's just ignore it we'll go around it for now you obviously are going to shade that you know panel line around the bolt just to show that the bolt is there. So let's leave that for now. But you can just see that we're gonna leave that panel line, but we're going to uh, continue the highlight as if the bolt was never there. So let's finish up adding this XVD around this bolt. Remember to keep those curves. And once all that is filled in, I'm gonna go over where we're gonna place our other highlights on this shoulder. So now that we have that everything in line, we're going to see, okay, well, what do we want next? We want that um, 
alternating pattern because again believability and readability readability says we want them all in line we've already done that believability says we want the alternating pattern so we're going to do that next that's the next in the hierarchy of you know the order of our highlight so let's go this corner right here i want to incorporate it so let's just start right here we'll use this as our base and we can't connect it to that because we want that checker pattern so i'll leave that dark right there and let's just come up we'll keep coming up until we get to here and we'll say okay that's good enough you know that's a purity seal right there but underneath the purity seal i think the highlight would go to about where that line is right there that's where it would run to so now what we have is we have this brown area right here this brown area right here maybe let's extend this highlight out a little bit so now we have these three highlights two major ones in the line uh and one middle one in between that completes you know this checkerboard pattern and it kind of ties the two together and hits this corner so we're hitting everything we're making this work and you know if if your highlights ended up being in the wrong place and they didn't work get rid of them go back and try to figure out an orientation of these highlights that will work and will make it look believable so let's go next Let's go checkerboard pattern. I see this big open area. I'm thinking, okay, secondary highlight, let's go. This thing is gonna go about to here, I think. So then let's go and grab this trim right here to make our next highlight. Let's highlight that all up right there. Looks great. And you know what? Bonus, we even get it to blend in with this highlight right here with that grouping highlights together that's going to look great and i think that's all for the shoulder pad that we can see now but on the back side you would obviously have it less light because you know there's obviously not any light going to be hitting it it's only going to be counter reflections which if you remember i talked about being really bad but uh or not really bad really difficult sorry but for the sake of most non-metallic metal paint jobs on the tabletop you're going to want to imagine almost two suns which is going to sound like it's going to throw everything you know out the window but it's really not because your two suns are going to be one from the front and one from the very very back if you have non-metallic metal non-metallic metal on the back side <sighs> excuse me for example our predator yesterday that we had he had not a lot of non-metallic metal on the back side he only had that cape on the backside, which is just a matte uh, finish. So we can just really kind of ignore that back sun and only pretend it's there for some very select areas, like the back of the neck armor plate that he had right there. We can use that sun to highlight that. But for this guy, since he has a lot of non-metallic metal on the back, we can pretend the sun is coming, you know, directly from the back and directly from the front, which aren't going to contradict each other. So you don't have to worry about both at the same time you only ever have to worry about one so let's push those highlights first two important highlights these ones are what we're going to push all the way to ivory are we going to push all these to ivory i think so i think that would uh you know this shoulder is a very prominent part obviously shoulders on space marines are um a very large part of them and they take up a lot of space they demand a lot of attention so you want to give them that attention so i think we're going to just give this shoulder a bunch of ivory highlights it's going to be good so that's another thing is you want to focus your highlights this is more just a general rule of miniature painting uh and not non-metallic metal but you can take this advice and use it how you will you want to give your brightest highlights to the most important parts of the model which are going to be the weapons the head front of the chest on space marines shoulders but not on all models and you know on certain models it could be you know very different parts of the model for example like on certain models that maybe don't have any of those things like a row like a lehman russ tank you want to focus it around the top that little top kind of shelter area and around the barrel 
or on models that maybe are like orcs. They're they're you know they're giant biceps or their chest. You want to give the brightest highlights. But for our sake on Rubute Gilliman, we're going to give it to his chest, his weapons, and his shoulders. So let's just continue and highlight this this thing. Remember curve, and we're just going to. Ooh, if it will work for me, we're going to highlight through that uh, little spiky piece coming out because those, again, are very, very uh, corners kind of embodied. So they're going to catch a ton, a ton of light. They're just perfect for painting. While they may be difficult, they are really, really useful for uh, making that non-metallic metal look believable. Because something that is really hard to get to look good it's just weird cube shapes, just like really normal regular shapes are hard to make look good, which is something that um, may sound very counterintuitive. Oh, uh, well, it's easy to paint, so it must be easy to make look good. That's wrong. It's easy to paint normally. That doesn't make it easy to paint non-metallic because in non-metallic, you really just want those interesting shapes to be able to get all those highlights disguised as something believable. Because if you have just some random cube, it's hard to kind of get those highlights in a place that looks believable without making them too dark. Because on any just normal cube object, you're only, only going to have three highlights. One on each face. Or, sorry, you know, three visible faces. Obviously, there's six faces to the cube, uh, but you wouldn't really have them on those backsides. So when you're looking at a cube... You see the three faces. You're looking from the corner of a cube, and you're going to see those three faces. That's going to be your kind of most important um, uh, three faces. And um, so I forgot where it was. Um, you're going to want to use those three main faces. For each, can get one highlight, and it might look, you know. Decent if you really get that ratio of where you want the highlights on the cube to be, but it's just a really flat, boring, uninteresting shape, and it's really hard to make it look believable and look good. Whereas these weird shapes are really easy to make them look good and make them look believable. They might not be the easiest to execute on an actual paint job, but they're definitely easy to get in theory, like how we're doing right now. And if you are a really good painter, you'll be able to get these looking really, really great, no problem. So let's keep pushing these highlights. Again, I think we're going to bring all of these to ivory. So let's, you know, not let's be not be too sparing in how we're adding these highlights because we're going to bring them up to ivory anyway. So don't, you know, make them too small and not have any room in the end. You're going to want to have room for the ivory because if I make the highlight too small, uh-oh, I don't have enough room to add three more colors on top of that. So we want to make those highlights really, really big because, again, if we're pushing it to ivory, it's a big, big thing right in the way. So it's going to have big highlights anyway. So I guess that's a big moral of this episode is that you want to use the shapes to your advantage to disguise the, uh, the things that you're painting. Because when you disguise the highlights within the shapes your paint job is going to look 500 times better that's just that's just a fact of how uh how painting is when you make the highlights look believable in a way that looks believable on the geometry that it you know the highlight is placed on it just looks so good and it is really you know easier to do on the metal metal uh, because those highlights are so so contrasting so bright and those shadows are so, so, so dark. Um, so let's continue highlighting this main area. A little smaller. Sorry, my program is glitching out so much. Jesus. We're going to, again, make sure to get these little squiggly offshoots. when you highlight because again those are big corners that we want to have a lot of light hitting so it's already looking pretty good let's go to the next color 
that's going to be ice yellow. So once we put that ice yellow, this is going to start to look really, really almost finished because ice yellow is super close to our big highlight color, which is, of course, ivory. And, you know, ivory is not too dissimilar from that ice yellow. So when you're actually painting this model, or any non-metallic metal for that matter, it might be more beneficial to save the time and just not blend them if you're in a rush. If you're painting this for Golden Demon, of course you want to blend it, but in my personal experience, I find it does not look awful if you don't blend the ice yellow and the ivory. And that's the same thing that a lot of people say when you layer. You don't want to... Um, when you layer, you, you the point of layering a lot of colors is so you don't have to blend. And it just makes everything look uh, a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. Because when you, uh, when you glaze, it makes it smoother. But you're just adding paint and you're just asking for it to get messier and messier. Which is, you know, obviously not what you want. You want this to stay clean. So it's going to be smooth, but it's going to be less clean. So wherever you can, try to either wet blend or just layer as many colors as you can. Now here's something. We have this kind of problem where our highlight isn't reaching over to this kind of offshoot. But how we were saying we want that offshoot to be super highlighted so let's go up to this thing and let's say well we can kind of now that this is just one color we can kind of treat this as its own thing and again corners are going to catch light so we're just going to not bring it all the way to the end we're going to treat this as its own object now let's bring it up to this edge to make sure everything is highlighted nice and well. This is the last area we need to highlight. If my program will work. Okay, let's just highlight these. And then we're going to get on to the last highlight. And then we'll be able to move on for this darned shoulder that we've been on for so long. How long is this video already? Oh goodness, almost 30 minutes. We'll try to have you guys on your way soon. So here's another problem. We don't, if you can see, these have been gradually getting, uh, fading this way. But then we would have to have the ivory over here. Which looks weird since it's not coming to this edge. So let's just bring it to this edge and let's kind of curve it around. Let's curve it around so it kind of curves to that edge, but it hits the corner and it looks consistent with those fading inner highlights. Because again, just that believability. Whatever you think looks right, test it out. And if it looks right, perfect. You did well. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Just go back. You can always fix your mistakes later. That's the beauty of miniature painting. You can just go over anything you don't like. Let's highlight it right up to ivory. While we're over in this section, we might as well do the other two. So let's do this one. Let's pull it towards that little edge right there. So if you can see, I actually curved that right there. Right here, this is actually a curve because I'm just doing this where it wants and I'm pulling it towards that corner. Because again, corners are going to catch that light and it, the light is going to pull towards corners. So go to here again. Light is going to pull towards those corners. It's going to make sure to hit them. Pulling towards those corners. Make sure we have those really bright highlights. Finally, up here is another one of our main highlights that's really important. Get this. Same thing as we were saying before on this thing. Let's give it a little highlight, but not as far down as we did before. This thing can take a whole highlight right around this rivet can get highlighted nice and well so now the shoulder is pretty much done but what is it missing edge highlighting 
Again, another one of the most, most, most important parts of non-metallic metal. Let's erase this brown around this purity seal just so we can see what we're working around. There we go. So let's give it an edge highlight, shall we? So let's grab our ice yellow. Let's grab the smallest brush we can get. And let's get to edge highlighting. So edge highlight on every face you can see. The shoulder goes back. Shoulder goes all the way back to here. This part is going to go back here. You got to connect these two. And this edge is going back this way too. And remember, if you remember what I was saying about that trim separating from the armor, so let's give it that highlight where the trim actually meets the armor to make that just that bit more readable. So if you notice how I'm not actually using that um, ice yellow to go over the parts where the edges are already touching ivory, that's just to save some time because those parts are already going to be highlighted ivory anyway uh, on the edge. So there's not a point in just going over them with that normal, uh, you know, darker ice yellow color because they're just going to get drawn over anyway. So it would just be a little more complicated, but there's no real reason you can go over them, certainly if you wanted to. For example, I'll just go over this and then we'll show you how it goes to ivory after. So now that we separated that tread, it's already looking better. Let's grab our white and let's go. Oops. Let's go straight into here. Anywhere we're seeing that stuff connected to yellow highlights, we're going to edge highlight white. White, white, white right here. Getting everything connecting to that yellow. So, everything here, and this is where I said I would demonstrate, so let's demonstrate. Right here. Let's just go over that just like that. So as you can see, it didn't really matter in the end, but it's just a little easier to not actually highlight it. So last part right here, everywhere we see yellow. Let's add those ivory highlights. Especially on those corners. Okay. Now that that shoulder's gun done. And I've showed you everything about these trim. I think you guys are ready to go and do your own trim on your non-metallic metal models. This is what it looks like in the end on the final model. So let's review what we learned today. So what are our main takeaways? You need to have the contrast. You need to edge highlight. You need to separate the trim from the armor. And here's the main one. You need that uh, kind of alternating pattern. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. You want to disguise the highlights within the corners and secondary highlights where they would normally be. You need to keep the highlights in a line. And possibly the most important part, you need to have that kind of... Excuse me. You need to have that hierarchy of what highlights are most important to this model. Because if you don't have that, you're going to get lost and your highlights are going to look really unrealistic and unbelievable. So as long as you have that hierarchy of highlights, you have that contrast edge highlighting, and you remember all the rules, you will be absolutely golden, no pun intended, on these models. Uh, I wish you best of luck in everything that you paint. Uh, and that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you. Bye.